For a number of years, I've debated picking up a portable monitor like this to use as a second screen on my laptop. And now that I've had the chance to play with one, does it do what I wanted it to do? Today's video is brought to you by Lexar and the NM610 PCI Express NVMe drive. Available in 250GB, 500GB, and 1TB capacities, it makes the perfect upgrade for your laptop or desktop PC. Featuring NVMe 1.3 Gen 3x4 and speeds up to 3.5 times faster than SATA, it's the surefire way to supercharge your PC. Get into your games faster with the Lexar NM610 NVMe drive. Click the link down in the video description to learn more. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff, and today we're taking a look at the Leepow Z1 portable USB-C monitor, and huge thanks to them for sending this out for review. Inside the box is the screen itself with a magnetic case on it that also doubles up as a stand, as well as a variety of cables that you'll need to connect to all of your devices. It may come as a shock to some of you out there in YouTube land, but as much as I love big screens and powerful computers, when I'm on the go, I want as light and as small as possible, which is why my mobile machine is a 12 inch MacBook. Yeah, this is my daily carry when I'm out and about. Well, luckily I don't have to go out and about anymore. But like I said in the intro, I've been looking at picking up one of these screens for the last couple of years for when I am on the go and would like some extra screen real estate for my laptop. We'll start off with the specs of the screen itself. Again, this is the Leepow Z1. It is a 15.6 inch IPS display with a 1080p resolution, 300 nit brightness, two USB-C ports, one for power, one for video, and a mini HDMI jack. If you're familiar with an iPad or a Microsoft Surface Pro, you'll recognize the flip cover right away that also doubles as a stand and you can pick from a couple of different angles for this. I did feel that either of these screen angles pretty much matches what I would have my laptop at when I'm sitting at my desk. So that's a win for ergonomics right out of the gate. The screen material is what I would call quasi anti-glare, where it's certainly more reflective than a matte screen, but it also doesn't have the mirror-like effect that a lot of glass panels tend to have. And beyond the couple of ports I already mentioned, there's really not a lot left to this screen. There's a little menu jog dial right here, as well as a power button, and then a speaker on the opposite side. Beyond that, what you see is what you get. It is just a screen. There's no onboard battery or other features to worry about. Getting into how the display works, I was really happy with how plug and play the setup was. As you can see, I've set up my MacBook here and the only thing I've done is plug in the USB-C cable from the MacBook into the side of the panel. We get power and video all from the single cable. If your laptop charges over USB-C, I've got great news for you there as well, as there is a USB-C power plug on the right side of the monitor. If you plug your laptop power adapter into that plug, it will charge your laptop and keep your screen on all at the same time. So with just two cables, I've got power and data to both devices. So now we have the screen completely set up, but how is it to use? Well, let's start with media playback and what I think is the screen's strongest feature. 1080p video looks crisp, smooth, and very, very watchable on this screen. However, the speakers leave a little bit to be desired. So let me demo those for you and right now. F8 motherboard, as according to my research, oh wait, sorry, this is one of the that's most the laptop. motherboards out there without needing to modify the BIOS. And of course, that's at max volume. So let me introduce you to thread CPU based on the Intel Haswell architecture with a 3.0 gigahertz base clock. Yeah. So yes, there are speakers inside of the Leepow Z1. However, I really don't know why they were included as they are completely useless in every situation that I tried. I would have much rather seen this ship without speakers in it rather than shipping with terrible speakers because then I wouldn't have had anything bad to say about them. So video playback is great and I could definitely see this being used as a portable gaming monitor for a games console or a smaller laptop like mine. In playing games on this screen, I did notice a fair amount of motion blur. However, it really wasn't any more than I would expect on a lot of mid-range laptops or even some TVs. And again, with the portability of this unit, it's something you could easily toss in a backpack along with a Nintendo Switch or an Xbox and take it wherever you needed to go. But I haven't wanted one of these monitors for media consumption or for gaming. It is for content creation and extra real estate on my laptop. So how does it work for that? Now again, to be fair, I am comparing it to what is a pretty good mobile display in the 12 inch MacBook, but there are a couple things I noticed immediately on plugging in the display. Number one, it's probably about half as bright as my MacBook. Like seriously, let me flip this thing around. It is a stark difference between the two displays. And in fact, I had to turn this one down to about 40 or 50% before they matched in brightness. Secondly was the stark mismatch of color between the two. And that's coming from someone who is red green colorblind. I noticed a color difference on these, and that one is worse. 
Like a lot of different monitors, you can go into the menu on the Z1 and select a couple of different color temperature profiles. However, in this one, there's only warm, cool, or user. Now, I will note the warm color profile is the one that I prefer looking at on this display, but it is still starkly cooler than my MacBook display. And the cool profile on this monitor is, in my opinion, just straight up unusable. It looks horrible, and that's, again, by my eyes. So from a professional work point of view, there's a couple of big strikes against this monitor already in both brightness and color mismatch, both of which drive me absolutely nuts when looking at multiple monitors. But there's a third major issue with this display that is going to keep me from recommending it from a content creation standpoint, and it's also going to contradict one of my earlier statements, and that's ergonomics. I know, earlier in this video, I said the ergonomics on this screen were good. I said the viewing angle of this screen and the adjustability were quite good and very comfortable, if you're sitting right in front of it. That's the key. But there is a major difference between sitting directly in front of the display and looking at it straight on, or turning around like this so someone else can see it across the desk from you, and turning the screen completely around and trying to set it next to your laptop. The ports on this thing are absolutely in the wrong positions. In a multi-monitor setup, you usually want your monitors as close together as possible, and while I can't achieve kind of the same viewing angle, I really can't get them close together because the ports get in the way on both sides of this device. And again, because we're in a situation with a laptop where the keyboard and mouse are on the laptop, I can't sit between the two displays. I have to commit myself fully to the one that has the controls on it. After using this display for a couple hours to write up this review, I actually wind up with a fair bit of neck pain trying to alternate between the two screens. Putting the ports on the sides of the display I'm sure helped with keeping it thin. However, it also caused a major usability issue with this screen for me. So again, this is pretty much the most comfortable that I could get this set up, and it's still not great. This becomes nothing more than a reference screen where you can glance at it occasionally and then go right back to using your primary laptop display. And if the whole point is to get either a bigger display or a secondary display, this is a far, far lower tier secondary display than a traditional multi-monitor setup on a desktop PC. Now there are a number of other professional use cases I did think of for this screen, and for those, they would probably be a winner. Again, if I were in a financial or real estate environment, I could flip this screen around and show someone else a copy of my screen or simply other items on the screen that I want them to look at while keeping my monitor front and center and not having to crowd around it. In a setup like this, I think this monitor does make a lot of sense, or like I mentioned earlier, as a portable gaming monitor. But from a content creation perspective, it's really a no-go, as there's no comfortable way to use this monitor as I would in a normal workflow. The display is far too dim, the colors are wildly different from any other display that I compared it to in this room, and the port position makes it pretty much unusable as a secondary screen for a single user. That and whatever laptop you're using to drive the display, I really hope it has USB-C video out, as if you're using HDMI, this does have a mini HDMI connection instead of a full-size port, so you will have to adapt that over. Now it comes with a cable, but it's one extra cable you have to carry with you. Also remember, HDMI doesn't carry power, so if you plug in via HDMI, you will have to power up the screen using the USB-C cable on the side of it. That also means that you can't pass power through the display into your laptop, as again, HDMI doesn't carry power. So you'll also have to plug in your power brick to your laptop if you want to stay up and running all day long. So I know I spent a lot of time harping on this monitor, but I really do like it at the price point of $185 if your use case matches what this can deliver. As a portable monitor for watching media like Hops and Brews here, which by the way, if you're a fan of the beer content on this channel, go give Hops and Brews a look. Link down in the video description below. I think this is also a fine option as a single USB-C cable from your laptop or even your smartphone, and you can be watching videos on a 15.6 inch display. As a secondary screen to show your display to clients, it's also a great option. However, from a content creation standpoint, that is one user, two displays, I can't see a situation where I would use this monitor. I'm not gonna take this to Vegas and use it to hold tools in Premiere while I'm editing video. I'm not going to put a document up here and type something else on my main display, as it's just not comfortable to use. So again, some users are gonna like this display, some users are not gonna like this display, and I think it really all depends on how you use it. If you are interested in picking up a LiPao Z1 for yourself, I will have Amazon affiliate links down in the video description below. Go give those a look. In the meantime, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. And subscribe to Hops and Brews if you haven't done so already. He's a co-host on Talking Heads, my once weekly live show for the latest in beer and tech news, every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Pacific time, right here on YouTube.
Follow me on Twitter, at Craft Computing, to keep up with my daily shenanigans. And if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon. Link is also down in the video description. Thank you all so much for watching this one, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. That one was just okay. Today's beer is from Torn Label Brewing in Kansas City, Missouri. It is their Goldie Hops American Golden Ale, 4.8%. It's got almost like a cucumber kind of a smell to it. It's interesting. It's certainly a beer. It's not bad. There's some flavors there. It's got hops. Uh, the hop flavor is more towards like the vegetation side of things. It's not, it's not grassy. It's not citrusy. It's not acidic. It's not anything like that. There are some flavors you can pick out there. Um, but overall, it's just pretty muted. I mean, it's a nice, refreshing beer, and it's certainly light, so this is certainly one you could uh, have after mowing the lawn. I'd say it's more Pilsner than Golden Ale. It's not bad. Um, now, full bias disclosure here, I, I'm not the biggest fan of Pilsners in the world, and uh, this is definitely no exception. It's got some flavors there that I see what they're trying to do, but at the same time, I feel like they're missing the mark. Like I said, this is supposed to be a golden ale, so I'd expect a little bit better malt profile out of it. Instead, I'm getting, honestly, what I've come to expect out of a lot of the flyover state IPAs, and that is a hop profile that really tastes like dirt and celery. I don't know if it's the hops they're using, I don't know if it's the water, but uh, there's something about a lot of the beers from this region that are supposed to be a little bit more hop forward that you just end up with like bitter lettuce. It's weird.